Hello again folks, this video is going to be a teardown of this Anang AN8001 digital multimeter which you may have seen me review in my previous video and we're also going to do another competition time announcement which will be at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that, um, if you just want free stuff and can't be bothered watching this video then of course you can fast forward to the end. <laughs> But yeah, in my review video, I did state that if there was an appetite for it, I would uh, tear down this meter. Uh, and quite a few of you commented and sent me messages saying that, yes, you would like to see inside it and see what the build quality is like. So that's what I'm going to do today. So while I'm uh, taking the screws out, we'll just recap it. Um, yeah, it cost me £10 and uh, I'm genuinely impressed with it in terms of the build quality on the outside anyway. Um, and the accuracy uh, for £10, I think this is a fantastic little meter for the price. Um, yes, it's a budget meter, but budget's good when it comes to being a hobbyist. We like to keep costs down, don't we? So I'm not going to speculate or uh, whatever about what's inside this meter. We'll just take it apart and have a look just now. If I can get it out. Do I need to take any more screws out? Oh. Bit of movement there. Okay. All right. So the battery compartment is implemented directly onto the board. Um, yep, it's literally just soldered on uh, with those two pads there. Um, of course, when the back shell is on this, uh, this will fit into this uh, uh, rectangular shape here and prevent it from moving from side to side. So I don't see any dramas with that. Um, We've got a brass insert for the battery compartment retention screw, which is always nice to see. Nice touch there, rather than just a self-tapper, which may strip over time. Um, and onto the, onto the board itself, yeah, it's a nice uh, glass fibre board. Um, we've got a chip on board, unsurprisingly. Um, you know, a, a more expensive meter would have a quad flat pack, you know, a QFP, something like that. Um, but of course, again, they keep, do that to keep uh, costs down to minimum. Uh, yeah, a lot of surface mount, caps, resistors, uh, some other resistors here. Um, that's pretty much it, a diode down there. Uh, through hole wise, we've got a 4 megahertz crystal, a small electrolytic cap, piezo buzzer for the uh, continuity test, and we're two fuse holders, 10 amp fuse, obviously on the 10 amp input, and um, we've got a 600 milliamp fuse on this uh, multi function input here. Um, 10 amp current shunt there and uh, the input jacks, or terminals, whatever you want to call them, just pressed and shaped plated steel. Uh, yeah, a little bit flimsy, but of course, you know, we're not going to be you're not going to be dealing with tens of amps. It's you know, nice low current, uh, low voltage uh, applications we're going to be using this for. So, we'll take the uh, board out and have a look on the other side. In fact, I've just noticed as well there's a range switch on here. For us, a carbon type rubber button, um, but there's no button on the back of the uh, housing. So, uh, is, there is potential, I suppose, that um, if you recall, I said there's four different flavours that this particular model comes in the 8001, which is this one, the 8002, 3, and 4. It may be that this uh, button is implemented in one of those other three meters. So, if you do own one of those other meters, please let me know if yours does have a button on the back. I can't think why it would have one in the back, I'm not sure. Maybe it's for testing uh, purposes, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so I think these two look like they're just retaining the um, LCD assembly, so we'll take that out. There we go. So not expecting to see anything on this other side. I may be wrong. No, not a lot. Just the contacts for the uh, rotary selector switch and uh, the two rubber buttons for the hold and uh, function select. A uh, copper contacts on the back. Nothing too special. They do have put a, applied a little bit of lubrication on there, which is nice to see. Um, overall, not a lot to it. As I said, probably uh, what you would be expecting. Uh, built to a cost rather than up to a standard. Um, but, you know, it does a good job. It's certainly going to be a better build quality than something like this. This is a super cheapo 830B uh, DMM, which you can get everywhere for about £2, including delivery. It really is a super cheap meter. Uh, that said, um, you know, it does work. It is fairly accurate. Again, um, 
it is what it is, it's a cheap meter. In fact, we'll tear that one down as well, why not? Uh, interestingly, um, I don't know if I mentioned in my video when I did a, a mini review of this, um, it's actually around £5 cheaper to buy it built as it is to buy it as a kit because you can get this in kit form and it's about seven pounds I, I don't know why it's cheaper to build uh, buy one that's already built um yeah <laughs> what can we say about that yeah absolute cutting the cost down i mean look at that the rotary select switch uh is is out the size of the actual PCB. Of course, there's no requirement for it to be covered by PCB, but it just shows you how they've cut the board down to a tiny, tiny size uh, just to get more in there. Um, as you can see here with this, uh, where it's been cut to break the boards off, probably one of these boards around 180 degrees will fit that perfectly, and it's just to get more boards in, uh, you know, per sheet. Um, purely to keep cost down tiny little board again we've got a cob on there there is a uh, pads there for a qfp but they've chose not to implement that um there is no input protection as you can see the input is directly onto the board we've got our current shunt there um everything surface mount other than the current shunt and the uh, transistor tester down there yeah cheap as chips um it's not brilliant it's it's reasonably accurate um but if I were you, I'd spend a little bit more money um, and get something like this Aneng here. So, there we go. Not too bad is how I'd describe it. Um, it's a budget meter, guys. I mean, come on. Um, I will state at this uh, point, um, just to make it 100% clear, because I don't think it, I have made it clear in the past. Um, don't ever use budget equipment like this on... Uh, high voltage high current equipment you're asking for trouble okay yes it may be fine but there is always a chance that something could go wrong if you're working on high current high voltage stuff get a professional tool uh, with proper input protection properly rated uh, uh, leads etc etc be as safe as you can as hobbyists we shouldn't be dealing with high voltages and high currents but occasionally high voltages um, but not really high currents as always, just take care, you know, be sensible about it. Don't put yourself in any danger. That said, these are absolutely fine for little flashing LED circuits, you know, fault finding little bits of equipment. You're not going to be fault finding or you shouldn't really be fault finding pieces of mains equipment whilst they're live. Uh, of course, there are times where you need to do that. But if you're at that stage, you should have the knowledge uh, and the, the experience, skills, all that good stuff uh, before attempting a repair or any sort of fault finding on live equipment. Be sensible. I know I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but be sensible. Right, I think I've laboured that point quite enough. Um, yeah, overall, impressed with it. Good little meter, happy with it. I will definitely get another one at some point. I might get one of the other models and, and do another review of that, but really good. In terms of accuracy, um, again, I do have a, a, a number of cheap meters. I've not got any flukes or anything fancy like that. They're all cheap meters. I've got this Velleman, uh, which I got from Maplin years ago. The Aneng, which you know about. This, which you know about. And the VC97, which is my usual go-to meter. Um, however, this Aneng has uh, taken place of that uh, recently. Um, in terms of accuracy, though, I have purchased a voltage reference just to check which one is the closest to the, the reference voltage um, and I possibly do a little sort of multimeter showdown uh, like Dave Jones does except budget styly um, basically just tell you which uh, meter gives you your best bang for buck in terms of uh, build quality versus cost versus accuracy versus features that kind of thing so look forward to that one hopefully in the near future okay dogs right competition time what can I get you to see in this video? Well, pick your favourite of these meters or put whatever you want in the comments. I don't mind absolutely anything at all. Just stick something down there. Um, this is for 1,750 subscribers. Uh, that figure has actually just been passed. Um, but I did say every 250 subscribers I would do the prize draw. So I will keep this prize draw open for a week and draw it next Thursday 
evening so just over just over a week to enter put in whatever you want and i'll uh, pick a winner and send a little prize out to you i should say at this point uh, i should apologize at this point to john wilkes who won the last competition time i have got your package ready to go out to you i just have not had the time to get to the post office it is here and i promise it will be in the post to you this week Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching. Oh, sorry, guys and gals. Um, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on my fat head here. Um, yeah, take care of yourselves, and as always, all the best.